Hey everyone, in today's video I wanted to go over destructuring. In the last video when we talked about props, I know we did a lot of sort of complex things and destructuring was one of them. I want to make a video going over each of those things, destructuring, mapping, and spreading individually so it's easier for you guys to understand. As you can see here, I pretty much am just using a code sandbox React instance. And this code sandbox is pretty much just a very basic React application and I'm using using it here because we don't really need our own application to sort of illustrate how destructuring works. I just needed something simple and quick and Code Sandbox is great for things like that. Just a reminder, if you find value in these videos, please consider liking, leaving a comment, or subscribing. It really helps with the algorithm to get these videos out there. I can't tell you how much I love reading all your comments, and even if I don't reply to every single one, I always, always, always read every comment. So thank you guys, and I love interacting with you. So let's look at the official documentation from Mozilla on destructuring. You can see the first example is pretty much using an array. You can see here that they have declared an array over here and what they're doing is they are assigning two variables a and b to this array now you might remember this type of notation from the use state hook in react when you use the use state hook it will actually return an array and you assign two variables to that array so for example let's go ahead and import use state and when we want to use use state, we usually say, let's say if our variable is count, we want a variable that keeps track of the count. We usually say count comma uh, set count is equal to use state, and then whatever you want the initial thing to be. Now this use state variable will actually return an array of items. The first item will be the actual variable called count um, that has the value inside of it. And the second item is actually a function called uh, the setter function that you will call whenever you want to set count. If I wanted to, for example, set count to three, I would just call uh, you know, set count and pass in three, and that would set our count. Now, obviously, we're going to get an error if we just do it in here because it's going to infinitely loop, and every time you change a state variable, your application is going to re-render. But that was just for an example. That is essentially what they are doing here. So in this example, they have another array and they have a third variable called rest. And what they are doing is they have this array that has five numbers in it, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And in the beginning where they are doing the destructuring, they are passing in a B and then they are spreading the rest of these variables to the rest variable. So if you were to console.log a, you would get 10. If you were to console.log b, because it's a second element, you would get the second element. And then if they use a spread operator, which we will cover in a, pre, in a further video, but I think it's a bit easy to understand in this scenario, it will just take whatever is left um, of the array and assign it to this rest variable. So that's the basics of destructuring when it comes to arrays. But what I really want to cover is destructuring when it comes to objects, because that is what you're going to see in the wild and on the workforce and, you know, just in general, a lot more than arrays. And let's see if they have any examples of it down here. So let's see if they have objects. Okay, so we can see here they have a basic example of doing it with objects. You can see they have an object here called user. And in that user object, they have two fields. One is ID and one is something, a variable called is verified. Now, whenever you want to pull those variables out of your main object, and this is probably the most simple case of destructuring that you will see, all they are essentially doing is um, uh, putting the squiggly braces around the variables you want to pull out, typing the variables, and then making it equal to whatever the object was. So now you can see if they were to console.log ID and is verified, you would get the actual values. So let's go and make our own example. So let's, for example, say we have like an employee object. So const employee equals, and let's say the, the employee ID is like ABC. Their name is Anthony, and their salary is like $10 or something. Um, 
when we want to go ahead and use these variables, what we can do is we can go ahead and say const, you know, and then we go ahead and get whatever variables we need. So if we only need name, we can go ahead and say, you know, employee, save that, and then let's go ahead and display it. So let's get rid of this default text and let's, you know, display the name. So we just come in here, denote our squiggly braces, type in name. And here we go. You can see that this name variable that we are wrapping in the squiggly braces is actually um, coming from employee. And we can do the same thing with ID. Oops. So let's go ahead and change this variable to ID now that we are pulling it out. And you can see we get the ID. And this is the most basic way to destructure. Most of the times I would recommend just doing it like this, although there are more um, complex things and we'll get into that in just a second. Now, the second thing that I want to show you when it comes to the most sort of basic way to destructure is how to destructure, um, destructure nested objects. So let's say for example, um, we have like, uh, I don't know, under the employee, let's say we have an address. Uh, but the address, we don't just, you know, want to put like, you know, uh, 210, like, uh, you know, Washington Street, like, uh, I don't know, like Ontario, Canada, M3, F, like 8, E, Three. This is a postal code bus, by the way. You know, a Washington, or sorry, an address is built off of a lot of different things. And you'll see this in data sets a lot. Um, you know, we have the street number, we have the street name, we have the, the province, we have the country, and then the postal code. And a lot of the times, if you're going to be working with a backend developer on the job, they're not just going to give you an address field that you simply display. The address is going to be split into multiple parts so you could display it depending on how you need it. So let's, for example, we we have uh, one field that would maybe be street. So we can say like 210 Washington Street. Let's say we have like country, Canada. And let's say we have, you know, province or, um, and let's say Ontario. Now you might be asking, okay, well, how do we destructure something like this? An object, let's say I specifically wanted this, the street. How do I get it? Well, let me show you the different ways you can do that. So the first thing I can do is I can go ahead and, you know, do the obvious thing and destructure the address. And, um, you know, for let's do H2 um, and let's, uh, you know, display address dot street. That is one way to do it. Um, so you can see here, we are just simply, uh, it's just simply calling the attribute of this nested object, which is street and displaying it like that. But you know, if I wanted to display everything at once, you know, let's say, um, let's put these uh, beside each other. For example, if I wanted to have the street and then I wanted to have the address dot country, and then I wanted to have the address dot um, province all together, you can see here, like, it's a bit taxing to write address dot, address dot, address dot for every single one of them. Um, it's not the cleanest of code. And if this was, you know, if one of these had its own nested objects, that would add to the layer of complexity. All of a sudden you're doing like, you know, if I were to add another nest um, property to this object, let's say in address, I don't know, uh, let's say like... Uh, uh, zones maybe I don't know I, I'm sorry just making stuff up as I go now you know maybe like the plant zone if, if you know whoa that's a cool Z <laughs> it makes like a cool Z in code sandbox anyways you know if you know anything about like gardening and stuff like each region has its own plant zone so let's say like the plant zone is like 7b or something and let's make up like another random field like I don't know like uh, alien zone you know maybe that's like 41 or something went random if you wanted to now like you know um get one of those you would have to do like you know address dot zones dot plant zone right and you can see i have the zone right there and it sort of starts to get really messy so the other way to do that is we can go ahead and let's get rid of all that we can actually destructure from one of the variables we get so in this case, we're getting address. Let's go ahead and now destructure the fields we want out of address. So we can get the street, the country, and the province 
equals address. The same way that we destructured address out of employee, we are now destructuring its attributes out of it. And now you can see, let's do some string interpolation to display this very nicely. We can just do, you know, street, comma, and then the country, comma, and then the province. And by the way, this whole like, you know, dollar sign squiggly is just a way to display it all um, using string interpolation which we talked about in the last video but in case you haven't seen that one it's just a way to format your strings so whenever I want to have a I just have back ticks to denote that I'm writing a string and then whenever I want to dis display a variable I just put the dollar sign squiggly and then put the variable and I can write text around it so that's where like the commas come from in here I can be like you know the employees address and then you know add a string to make it more clear that's what we're displaying and stuff like that but there we go and if we wanted to destructure zones from that well we can pull zones out of address and then destructure whatever we want out of zones the exact same way so we can take plant zone and we can take alien zone out of zones and now you know if we want to display that let's go ahead and copy paste this and just delete it to make it a bit more simple we could do like zones and then you know plant or we can say like plant zone and then um, add the variable plant zone um, stuff like that you know we can get the variables like that so this is the simple way um, the nice clean way of destructuring you know uh, including nested objects and all that good stuff now let's talk about the next sort of thing which is um, uh, uh, renaming while you destructor. So let's say, for example, these zones had their own ID, right? Like, um, or let's say, for example, um, instead of address, so let's, uh, we can actually keep address. Let's say for some reason, their address had like um, a salary. Let's say like for whatever reason where, you know, our database happens to have a salary field inside of our um, address field, right? Um, just use our imagination, right? And let's say it's $100. Um, now we come to a bit of a problem because all of a sudden we have two things with the same name. You can see here, you know, out of the employee object, I can go ahead and destructure, you know, their salary and display it. Um, but now what happens if, and I'll get, let's get rid of all this stuff just to keep it clean and the least amount of confusing as possible. Now, what happens if I want to pull out salary from our address object, right? Well, you can see if I just type salary here, I'm going to get an error because we already have a variable named salary. And this is where aliasing comes in. If you want to pull out the salary field from employee, but maybe give it another name inside of your actual application so you can use other variables called salaries or to make it more clear which salary we are talking about, we can alias it. And the way we do that is just next to the field, we put a colon and then we can put whatever we want the alias name to be. So let's say I want to call it like employee, just to make it, you know, clear in my code, employee address, um, sorry, salary. Now, when we want to refer to it, we can simply just type in employee address and it will get that. And, you know, for the uh, employee salary and it'll get that. And let's say we want to refer to the salary inside of address. Well, we can alias that to, let's say, address salary. And now if I wanted to use the address salary, we can do address salary. There we go. And you can see we have the employee salary and then the address salary just like that. And aliasing is really good because I know like the salary example is a bit silly, but in a lot of your data, when you're working with a backend engineer, a lot of your data is going to look like this. It's going to have nested fields and the, you know, a lot of the times, depending on what you're working with, ID is going to be something that is very um, common. And depending on how the backend was developed and the database schema was developed, you know, your employee might just have an ID, but then something nested inside of it might have an ID as well. So you would have to, in your code, alias it so you don't um, butt heads on the two ID variable names. And, you know, you might alias the first ID to be something like, you know, employee ID, and then the address or whatever nested field you have to be the, um, you know, the other ID. So aliasing is very, very important. 
uh, to know how to use. And it looks a bit confusing, but hopefully uh, these simple examples have sort of cleared it up. Now let's get rid of um, those examples and let's go to the next layer of complexity. If you are someone that it just wants to use destructuring for, you know, the basic use cases, we've pretty much gone over all the basic use cases. Now we are going to go over some of the more um, complex ones and, you know, stuff that will shorten your code but make it less readable because it's a bit more complex. So let's jump into that. The way we can do that is by um, destructuring you know how before when we wanted to get attributes from address, you know, let's say we want to get the street from the address, we would just on a different line destructure it down here and get the street name. Now, there's actually a way where you can do that without, um, you know, having a new line and declaring new variables. And that is called destructuring in place. So let's say, for example, we wanted to, you know, get the street name from the address. Well, one way we can do that is, um, for example, we can put a colon here, put some braces here, and type street. And now we are destructuring the street from the address in place. So if I were to go to, you know, make an h2 and type in street and then end the h2, you can see we have pulled the street out of our address and we can keep going with everything else, right? We can get the country and we can get the province as well. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. So country, province. So as you can see here, when we are pulling out of an employee, we're pulling name, we're pulling ID, and then we're pulling address. But then in address, we also want to pull, um, you know, the street, the country, and the province from that nested object. And this can go on, as you can imagine. Let's say we have zones now, right? Zones, we can put the same colon and the same squiggly braces and now pull out plant zone and alien zone. And you can see here the layer of complexity becomes more and more. Now, if you were to just look at someone's code and they had something that looked like this, it's a lot more confusing to look at rather than the example that we had five minutes ago where everything is um, sort of destructed. And to top it all off, to add the, like, the highest layer of complexity, you can also alias all these nested fields. So let's say I wanted to alias plant zone to like, you know, uh, my plant zone or something random. Well, we can now in H2, in an H2, display my plant zone. And here we go. We have 7B, which is the plant zone. And this example really um, is probably the most complex thing because it combines every single thing we've talked about regular destructuring, nested destructuring, and then aliasing all into one example. And even though I wouldn't recommend doing this uh, in my actual code, I personally prefer keeping it separated because I like to, I find it's a lot more clean and when other people work with my code, they can easily understand what is going on. I think this is a lot more, uh, you know, a lot harder to understand at first glance, but to each their own. And I wanted to illustrate it in this example, just so you have it as a reference. That is pretty much it. And like I said earlier, if you found value in this video, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm to help get these videos out there to more and more people like yourself who are trying to learn React and be uh, get to the professional level with React. I love reading your comments and I hope you're all staying safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.